Guitar tips, guitar tips, just the tips, just for you. Guitar tips. Hello, hello and welcome. Welcome to Guitar Tips. My name is Adam Levy. This is my weekly video blog series. Um, I post a new tip here each and every Friday. And you can subscribe. There's a, a red button down there that makes it real easy to do. You hit it once and then you're you're in. You're a fully um, you're a full-fledged tipper. Uh, I was gonna add some fancy Latin words at the end there, but I, I don't I don't speak Latin. Do you? Do you send put put some comments down below in Latin and let me know. Um, speaking of comments, I want to thank everyone who uh, wrote in last week um, recommending their favorite guitar books. A lot of people liked Randy Vincent's book, um, Three Note Chords and Beyond, and actually bought it, and I've been enjoying it. So thank you for recommending that. Lots of other good books. Um, yeah, it was. I think that was the most feedback I've gotten on any tip. So um, just know that I'm... I'm uh, I'm listening. <laughs> I'm really curious to know what you guys are uh, thinking about and working on. So, um, this week, oh, I, I need to mention our sponsor. Uh, as always, we are sponsored by Martin Guitar Strings. The strings here on this guitar are Martin Strings. Um, I like their retro series. They are just kind of no-nonsense uh, strings, they sound warm, um, they play in tune, they they look a little different, they look, you know, they're kind of nickel looking, they don't look like your typical bronze guitar string, because, well, because they're not. Uh, and anyway, I want to thank Martin for uh, supporting, supporting guitar tips and for making uh, some excellent strings that I use every day. Um, this this week's tip uh, seems like I'm I'm talking about jazz a lot these days. I, I hope that's that still interesting to most of you. Um, <clears throat> if you're waiting for a tip, uh, if if you're tired of jazz or just want to talk about other stuff, once again, please uh, please do comment down below because uh, I'm curious to know what what you guys are working on at home. Uh, but this came up because. Uh, I don't know, I was doing a little bit of teaching and, and thinking about these, these different chord voicings and um, I noticed that a lot of my students are still perplexed by um, the, the, the terminology that you sometimes hear around jazz guitar chords. There, there are drop two chords, th those are pretty common. There's another family of chords called drop three. And there's another family called drop two and four, or drop two, drop four, however you want to say it out loud, but the two and the four are dropped. So, um, this week's guitar tip is what the drop, what the drop, what the drop is going on with all these chords. What are, what are, what's being dropped and what are people talking about and why should we know these chords? So, um, the, the, the idea of drop chords is basically um, spreading out the harmony that you're using. Uh, let, let's say, for example, we had a C major seven chord, okay? This, and you want to be in the melody. So this would be the most direct way to get at that. We're just going, that's as, as closely squeezed together as you can get all the notes in that chord. A C major seven chord is C, E, G, B. Um, that's the how you construct it, uh, and that's how we're playing it here. We're not, not doing any funny business to, to uh, move the notes around. We're just playing the chord as it is. This is a textbook C major seven with the B on top. That's the seven. But of course, sometimes you might not want that real close uh, harmony sound. You might want a more open sound like that. So that's the same melody note on top, 
and the same notes but just moved around a little bit so instead of C E G B this is G C E B and you can also play that voice in here just on the different string set I sometimes I'll do it with a double stop here so that's just a little kind of more open and and uh, this is this is the closed sound this is open we could open it further this is another kind of voicing and, and I'll get into what these are but I'm just showing you what the what the sound is here so now I've got E C G B still have to be on top not adding any notes other than the notes of the C major 7 but we're just re reconfiguring them and there's another one down here Again, you could move these over to different string sets. It's not, it's not so much about the location as the, as the structure. So this is C, G, E, B. And of course you could make it a minor seven chord or dominant seven chord or, you know, uh, minor seven flat five chord. There's, this works for any kind of four note uh, chord. So, so so this this is what we call a root position closed voicing chord it's called root position because root is in the bottom and it's closed voicing because all four notes are squeezed within an octave span that's as close together as we can really um, get those notes uh, for c major seven this chord is a drop drop two voicing now Okay, what the drop? What happened there? So here's how drop voicings work. We look at our root position closed voicing chord here. And instead of looking at these notes uh, as how they function, which is normally what we like to do, or what I like to do, root three, five, seven, we're just gonna count them down from the top like we don't really think about the function, we're just counting them now. We're just, we're just counting like like the count on Sesame Street. So we've got one, two, three, four. We're counting down from top to bottom. One, two, three, four. So if we drop two, in this case that's that's the G. We drop G down an octave. You could drop it down to here and leave the other notes where they were. So we still need C, E, and B down an octave and that's how we get this so that's a drop to C major 7 voicing with a B on top um, we might call this second inversion and uh, if that's confusing uh, just think about this anytime you have the root in the bottom of a, of a chord like this we'll call that root position anytime you have the third in the in the bottom meaning the, the lowest sounding note that'll be first inversion. Anytime you have the fifth in the bottom, as we do here, that's second inversion. And if you have the seventh in the bottom, that would be third inversion. And that's it. So uh, these are different kinds of chords, but just to show you, this is root in the bottom, first inversion with third in the bottom, fifth in the bottom, that's second inversion, and then seventh in the bottom that's third inversion okay write that down so so that's a drop two voice in C major seven of course you can uh, what I just showed you here uh, a second ago these are also drop two chords so this is a drop two C major seven on the on the middle string set root position first inversion Again, it's dropped to here. We've got the G on top. If you were going to try and play a closed position C major 7 with G on top, you would need either big hands or some tapping technique as I'm doing here. Because you would have to get the C and the B right next to each other. That's why we don't play a lot of closed position chords on the guitar. They're just, they wind up looking like that they're almost impossible so drop two um, is just a name for these chords that lay happen to lay really easily on the guitar uh, the way the guitar is tuned and the way our hands are shaped drop two voicings are chords that you probably already know if you've been playing some jazz you might not call them drop two but 
That's that's what these all are. Then then the next uh, set of chords is drop three. So drop three again. We would count one, two, three, four. We drop three in this case the E, and leave the other stuff intact. And you would get this kind of chord. So if we drop, if we leave C G B intact, and we drop E, C G B, drop the E. That's a first inversion drop three C major seven. And again, you could make it minor seven by flatting the third and the seventh. You could make it minor seven flat five. You could you could do a lot of different things with it. I'm just mostly saying with major seven because hopefully it's just clear. So that's that's the first inversion of that. Um, if we go down to the root position, drop three, it's this shape, which you may not know or may not recognize with the root on the fifth string, but we move it over to root on the sixth string, and it's it's just this chord, which you probably know if you've played some jazz. So again, you're probably familiar with the drop three chords, even if you don't name them that. But here, here would be the drop three chords on C major seven. Uh, second inversion with the fifth on the bottom. Third inversion with the um, seventh on the bottom, root position, and first inversion. I only I only started with second inversion here because I'm just going from the bottom of the neck to the top. So here's root position, first inversion, second inversion, third inversion, and back home. Those are your drop three voicings. Again, we're dropping this note. And then just doing uh, the different possible inversions. Uh, inversions, if you're not sure what that means, uh, just as we go up, each each note moves up to the next possible note in in the structure that we're in. So if we're playing C major seven, we want to go C up goes up to E, B goes up to C, E goes up to G. Um, and G goes up to B, we wind up with this. So everything is just moving up one chord tone and staying on the same string if we can. So that's how these are derived. And this next one we can't quite reach, or I can't reach on this guitar. So we drop it down here, G, E, B, C, okay? So the last set I wanna talk about is drop two and four. Drop two and four means we drop two and four, so we would get, uh, if we drop the G down an octave and the C down an octave and we keep E and B together, I'm just gonna change strings here. Now that's it, we've got C, G both dropped and then E, B where they were. This is a C major seven, drop two, drop four voicing, okay. Here's the first inversion, second inversion, third inversion. Here it is down low. And of course you could play these on the sixth string set as well. Really nice, big, warm sound. Um, why would you use these different voicings? Well, it just depends on what you're trying to do. If you're playing uh, solo guitar arrangements, you can probably uh, afford to, to get the chords nice and spread out. You might use drop three or drop two, drop four. If you're playing in a, in a trio setting, um, you might want to, with a, with a bass player, I mean, uh, or and or playing with a singer. If you're playing with a singer and a bass player, now the guitar generally has to be smaller because the singer is in the register and the bass player is in the register and you've got to fit in between. But if it's just you on the guitar playing by yourself or just you and a singer, um, you might want to use more kind of spread out voicings because you can cover more territory and be a little more pianistic. Um, and anyway, it's just good to have a variety of chords so that you're not always playing the same voicing every time you see a C major seven chord, you're not always grabbing the same shape. You want to have different places to go. So um, specifically, if you wanted to practice your drop two and drop four, there's a couple little exercises you might want to do. And I'm going to emphasize those here just because 
they're probably the least known and 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 you, this will be a chance for you to work on them a little bit. So um, one thing is to, just to take a shape around the chromatic circle of fourths. C, F, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat or F sharp, B, E, A, D, G, and back home to C. And you could do the same thing on the on the sixth string set, sixth str the string set with a sixth string root. So C, F, B flat, etc. Um, you could also do the diatonic circle. So that would be staying in the same key but using different chord qualities as they come around. So C major seven, that's the one chord. F major seven, that's the four chord. B minor 7 flat 5, so here I've had to move the 5 down and the 7 down, so B minor 7 flat 5, E minor 7, A minor 7, D minor 7, G7, C major 7. So again, I, those are just the chords in the key of C, C major 7, D minor 7, E minor 7, F major 7, etc. Just the chord scale, but but going in a in a circle of fourths root motion. So C major seven, F major seven, B minor seven, and you can do the same thing on the fifth string set. B minor seven flat five, E minor seven, A minor seven, D minor seven, G seven, C major seven. I find that's a good exercise because jazz tunes tend to move in that kind of root motion and. Um, I don't know, to me it's a little more interesting than just playing up the chord scale and back, but you certainly can do that. Do that too. Um, then, you know, you might want to practice voice leading. So, um, instead of jumping around in parallel, uh, you might go, like, here's A minor 7, second inversion, so E, A, G, C, D minor 7. And we voice led. So instead of going to this D minor 7 wave here, we're letting things C stays and A stays. And then when we want to go to G7, and then C major 7. So just voice leading through. could do that with the diatonic circle of fourths exercise that we did a moment ago. So you could go C major 7, F major 7, B minor 7 flat 5, E minor 7, A minor 7, D minor 7, G7, C major 7, and you could do it on the, these low strings too. C, that makes sense if you have questions send me an email it's guitar tips at adamlevy.com write some comments down below let me know uh, if this makes some sense to you um, let me know how you're using it in real music I would encourage you guys as I've said before if you're if you're working on something put it into some real music either write an arrangement of a tune that you like using these chords or just write write a tune. It doesn't have to be a whole composition. It could be a four chord uh, vamp section or an eight chord vamp section or just two chords. Just pick two chords that you want to put together and uh, work back and forth and maybe improvise with. Um, turn it into music. Don't let it just stay some papers on your music stand. Um, bring it onto the guitar, bring it into your ears, bring it into your fingers and uh, bring it into the world. Um, what the drop what the drop people my name is adam levy this is guitar tips please subscribe tell your ma tell your pa um, i'll see you next week stay tuned and take good care <laughs>